The shock of the impact was terrific. The armored prow of the Muslim galley, Assad ed Din's own, smote the Spaniard a slanting blow amidships that smashed fifteen of the oars as if they had been so many withered twigs. There was a shriek from the slaves, followed by such piteous groans as the damned in hell may emit. Fully two score of them had been struck by the shafts of their oars as these were hurtled back against them. Some had been killed outright, others lay limp and crushed, some with broken backs, others with shattered limbs and ribs. Sir Oliver would assuredly have been of these but for the warning, advice, and example of Yusuf, who was well versed in galley fighting and who foresaw clearly what must happen. He thrust the oar upward and forward as far as it would go, compelling the others at his bench to accompany his movement. Then he slipped down upon his knees, released his hold of the timber, and crouched down until his shoulders were on a level with the bench. He had shouted to Sir Oliver to follow his example, and Sir Oliver, without even knowing what the maneuver should portend, but gathering its importance from the other's urgency of tone, promptly obeyed. The oar was struck an instant later, and ere it snapped off it was flung back, braining one of the slaves at the bench and mortally injuring the others, but passing clean over the heads of Sir Oliver and Yusuf. A moment later the bodies of the oarsmen of the bench immediately in front were flung back atop them with yells and curses. When Sir Oliver staggered to his feet he found the battle joined. The Spaniards had fired a volley from their calibers, and a dense cloud of smoke hung above the bulwarks. Through this surged now the corsairs, led by a tall, lean, elderly man with a flowing white beard and a swarthy eagle face. A crescent of emeralds flashed from his snowy turban. Above it rose the peak of a steel cap, and his body was cased in chain mail. He swung a great scimitar, before which Spaniards went down like wheat to the reaper's sickle. He fought like ten men, and to support him poured a never-ending stream of Muslimin to the cry of, Deen! Deen! Allah! Ya Allah! Back and yet back went the Spaniards before that irresistible onslaught. Sir Oliver found Yusuf struggling in vain to rid himself of his chain, and went to his assistance. He stooped, seized it in both hands, set his feet against the bench, exerted all his strength, and tore the staple from the wood. Yusuf was free, save, of course, that a length of heavy chain was dangling from his steel anklet. In his turn he did the like service by Sir Oliver, though not quite as speedily, for strong man though he was, either his strength was not equal to the Cornishman's, or else the latter's staple had been driven into sounder timber. In the end, however, it yielded, and Sir Oliver too was free. Then he set the foot that was hampered by the chain upon the bench, and with the staple that still hung from the end of it he prized open the link that attached it to his ankle. That done, he took his revenge, crying, Dean! as loudly as any of the Muslimin boarders. He flung himself upon the rear of the Spaniards, brandishing his chain. In his hands it became a terrific weapon. He used it as a scourge, lashing it to right and left of him, splitting here a head and crushing there a face, until he had hacked away clean through the Spanish press which, bewildered by this sudden rear attack, made but little attempt to retaliate upon the escaped galley slave. After him, whirling the remaining ten feet of the broken oar, came Yusuf. Sir Oliver confessed afterwards to knowing very little of what happened in those moments. He came to a full possession of his senses to find the fight at an end, a cloud of turbaned corsairs standing guard over a huddle of Spaniards, others breaking open the cabin and dragging thence chests that it contained, others again armed with chisels and mallets passing along the benches, liberating the surviving slaves, of whom the great majority were children of Islam. Sir Oliver found himself face to face with the white-bearded leader of the corsairs, who was leaning upon his scimitar and regarding him with eyes at once amused and amazed. Our gentleman's naked body was splashed from head to foot with blood, and in his right hand he still clutched that yard of iron links with which he had wrought such ghastly execution. Yusuf was standing at the corsair leader's elbow, speaking rapidly. By Allah, was there ever such a lusty fighter seen, cried the latter. The strength of the Prophet is within him thus to smite the unbelieving pigs.